hey, 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 hold it, hold it. Everybody listening now? We're warned that in about 10 minutes we're going to get a downpour. So there's the upstairs of the classroom, there's the downstairs of the classroom. You're welcome to go there. They said nothing about a tornado. There's also this house, there's a garage. So you're all right, you're on your own. <laughs> huh? Well, you're the barn, go to the barn. Yeah, go out to the barn. <laughs> My golly, how are you? We are glad to have our daughter on the barn. Well, let me tell you, I, I take full credit. <laughs> That's good. You can have it. This is something that a year ago I gave a talk at the Prairie Festival about uh, <clears throat> going by the farm where I grew up and we no longer own it, but I got out one day and just walked through the fields and I saw that and I remember the days when we did irrigation and we had big old tile like this to run the water through and I saw that and I couldn't have been more taken than if I had found an arrowhead. But what it did is bring back a history. And so I have affection for that. It has none for me. And I think that's the way with the earth. Why does it have to be symmetrical? We say, well, he didn't love me, but I love her. Or I love him, you see. I mean, it's simply good enough to Love without return, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, anyway, that's what I think is gonna, we're gonna be called on. Because, you know, it doesn't seem to mind when asteroids hit and, <laughs> you know, it just keeps on creating. Helianthus hanuas, Parthenocissus <laughs> quenchibolia, Ribes odoratum. <laughs> what about sorghum elephants? Well, that is the next one. Of course, it's one. invasive. No, but, you know. that, but once the commitment has been made, ah. you, get, you baptize them, you know, just to hold until they have to make a choice. And then okay, it'll be intermediate wheatgrass, <laughs> <laughs> sorghum elephancy, <laughs> sorghum whatever. <laughs> yeah. We are now trying to think about time and we cannot think 200,000 years. We can't feel 200,000 years, which is as long as we've had the big brain. And so here we have climate change and we are acknowledging that this will be essential for all practical purposes forever. Oh well, it doesn't move. Now look at West too. What's happening, Wes? Tell us. Well, you stepped off the earth and then you saw that the sun is not moving relative to <laughs> you as the person being the earth equivalent. There's your calf. Mm -hmm. The other one's up there. Well, you know, they got new calves, so we want to be cautious. All right. I think you'll probably be all right. Okay. Maybe they'll think I'm a big cow. The whiskey. <laughs> Coming soon to a theater near you. <laughs> The perennials. <laughs> yeah. When I die, I've instructed the scientists and my family members to uh, bring me here. They can come down the elevator, put me in this cooling place, and then when it's time for the burial, 
that I am imagine they will dig it by hand for symbolic purposes. They will dig it deep enough so that lying down from the tip of my nose until the surface is three and a half feet. That is where most of the biotic activity is. From here on down there is not that much biotic activity, therefore the decay will be slower and I will be sequestering carbon. My greatest fear is that there are not enough people that care or even want to inform themselves enough to care and therefore it will just get worse. We will wait too long. We have already waited too long, but the sooner we act, the more options for future generations we have. This is what we are talking about, options for future generations in a healthy and productive ecosphere. It is as simple as that. 